that there were about 5,000 people who participated in the last Wyoming caucus. It looks like all of them are here tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. And let me remind everybody that we've got a really important caucus here on Saturday. Doors open at 9 a.m. Let's be there. Let's win in Wyoming. Now, I don't know if the audience here knows it. I don't see any TVs here, but it has been projected by, I think, all of the networks that we won in Wisconsin. two words, I don't know, about what momentum is all about. Momentum is starting this campaign 11 months ago and the media determining that we were a fringe candidacy. Momentum is starting the campaign 60 to 70 points behind Secretary Clinton. Momentum is that within the last couple of weeks, there have been national polls which have had us one point up or one point down. <laughs> Momentum is that when you look at national polls or you look at statewide polls, we are defeating Donald Trump by very significant numbers. And in almost every instance, in national polls and in state polls, our margin over Trump is wider than is Secretary Clinton. With the victory in Wisconsin tonight, and let me take this opportunity to thank the people of Wisconsin for their strong support. With our victory tonight in Wisconsin, we have now won seven out of eight of the last caucuses and primaries. And we have won almost all of them with overwhelming landslide numbers. What momentum is about is that at a time in contemporary politics when every major candidate has a super PAC, we have said no to super PACs, said no to the billionaires who fund those super PACs. And what we have done is in an unprecedented manner in American history, we have up to this point in the campaign received over six million individual campaign contributions. Anyone here know what the average contribution is? That's exactly right. Smart crowd. Twenty-seven dollars. To paraphrase Abraham Lincoln, at Gettysburg. This is a campaign of the people, 
by the people and for the people. We have decided that we do not represent the billionaire class. We do not represent Wall Street or the drug companies or the fossil fuel industry. And we do not want their money. What momentum is about is my belief that if we wake up the American people and if working people and middle class people and senior citizens and young people begin to stand up, fight back, and come out and vote in large numbers, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. And what we have been seeing throughout this campaign is extraordinary voter turnouts in state after state after state. And I am particularly grateful and pleased that at a time when many of the pundits said, you know, those young people, they don't want to get involved in politics. They're not really concerned about the major issues facing our country. They're too busy with their video games or whatever. Well, you know what's happening? All over this country, young people are standing up and they're saying, you know what? We want to help determine the future of this country, which we are going to inherit. momentum is about is that all across this country, the American people are looking around them. And they understand that real change in our country's history, whether it is the trade union movement, whether it is the civil rights movement, whether it is the women's movement, whether it is the gay rights movement, they understand that real change never, ever takes place from the top on down. It always takes place from the bottom on up. And today, today, from coast to coast, and I've been from coast to coast, been in California, been in Maine, been in a whole lot of states in between. And what people are saying, why is it that in America we have grotesque levels of income and wealth inequality? Why is it that the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent? Why is it that for the last 30 years the great middle class of this country has been shrinking and almost all new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. The American people are asking, why is it that women go to work tomorrow and they're earning 79 cents on the dollar compared to men? People are asking, how does it happen that the United States of America, our great nation, is the only major country on earth not to guarantee paid family and medical leave? There are women giving birth in Wyoming and Wisconsin and Vermont today, but they're going to have to go back to work in two or three weeks 
because they don't have the income to take care of their family, which is why together we are going to pass three months paid family and medical leave. And the American people from coast to coast, they're asking, yes, the Affordable Care Act has done a lot of very good things. Thank you, President Obama, for your leadership. But, but in terms of health care, there is much, much more that has to be done. The American people are asking, why does it happen? that every other major country on Earth, United Kingdom, France, Germany, Holland, Scandinavia, Canada, every major country on Earth, guarantees health care to all of their people as a right, except the United States, and together we're going to change that international embarrassment. American people are asking, and young people are asking, why is it that when we are living in an increasingly competitive global economy, why is it that kids are graduating college thirty, fifty, seventy thousand dollars in debt? And in some cases, in some cases, spending decades having to pay out, pay off that debt. We should be rewarding people who get the education they need, not punishing them. And the American, the American people are asking, how does it happen when the scientists all over our country who study climate change and scientists all over the world are in virtual unanimous agreement that climate change is real, that it is caused by human activity, that it is already causing devastating problems in our country and around the world? How do we have a Republican party that refuses to even acknowledge the reality of climate change. And the American people are asking, how does it happen that we can spend trillions of dollars fighting a war in Iraq that we never should have gotten in in the first place. But that in Flint, Michigan, and in cities all over this country, our inner cities are crumbling. Unemployment off the charts. Healthcare system not accessible. Kids dropping out of high school. Too, too many being arrested and sent to jail. How come we can rebuild the infrastructure of Iraq and Afghanistan, but we cannot rebuild our own crumbling infrastructure? The American, the American people are asking, as they assemble all over this country, why can we not end a campaign finance system which is corrupt and which is undermining American democracy?
Democracy is not a complicated process. It means that you have a vote, and you have a vote, and you have a vote, and majority wins. What democracy is not about is billionaires buying elections. And the American people are asking another very important and profound question. And that question is, how does it happen in the wealthiest nation in the history of the world that we have more people in jail than any other country on earth? And what the American people are saying is that now is the time to invest in our young people in terms of jobs and education, not jails and incarceration. And some of you have recently heard about uh, the uh, discovery and the revelations about the tax dodging that is taking place in Panama, uh, which is one of the reasons that I oppose the free trade agreement with Panama. And one of the reasons I was on the floor of the Senate talking exactly about what I feared would happen, and that is wealthy people and large corporations figuring out ways to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. And what the American people are asking is, at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, how does it happen that you have large, profitable, multinational corporations who in a given year pay zero, not a penny, in federal income taxes. Now, change, real change, comes about, whether it is fighting racism, worker exploitation, sexism, homophobia. Real change comes about when people stand up and they look around them and they say, you know what? The status quo is not working. We can do better. And let me give you, I can give you many examples, but let me give you the most contemporary example of what happens when people stand up and fight back. If we were here in this beautiful auditorium five years ago, not a long time from a historical perspective, and somebody would have jumped up and say, you know, I think a $7.25 federal minimum wage is a starvation wage, and it has got to be raised to $15 an hour. Now, somebody stood up five years ago and said that, the person next to them would have said, you're nuts. 15 bucks an hour, you want to more than double the minimum wage, you're crazy. Maybe, maybe we get it up to eight, nine bucks an hour, but 15 bucks an hour, you're dreaming too big. Sound familiar? You are unrealistic. It can't be done. Think smaller. But then what happened is fast food workers, people working at McDonald's, people working at Burger King, people working at Wendy's. They went out on strike. And I was very proud to join with those workers in Washington. And they went out and they said, fellow Americans, we can't live on seven and a quarter an hour. We can't live on eight bucks an hour. You gotta raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. And they fought and they fought. And then suddenly a few years ago, Seattle, Washington 
15 bucks an hour. Los Angeles, San Francisco, 15 bucks an hour. Oregon, 15 bucks an hour. And in the last several weeks, in both California and New York, governors signed legislation for 15 bucks an hour. What is my point? My point is that, yes, we can change the status quo when we think big and when we have a vision. Now, I am, I am not naive. I know the power of Wall Street and their endless supplies of money. I know that corporate America will shut down plants in America and move to Mexico or China if they can make another $5 in profit. I know that billionaires are funding candidates whose job it is to represent the wealthy and the powerful. I know about the corporate media that will give us all of the information we need except what is most important for working families. I know about all of that, but this is what I also know. I know that what history is about is that when people stand up and they say the status quo is not acceptable, we will not have children working in factories. We will not have working people on the job who have no power over those jobs. We will not continue to have segregation or racism or bigotry. We will not have women unable to vote or go to the schools they want or do the work they want. We will pass gay marriage in 50 states in this country. So that is what I have learned from history is that when we are prepared to think big, when we are prepared to take on the greed and recklessness of Wall Street, when we stand together and we don't allow the trumps of the world to divide us up by whether we were born in America or born abroad, whether we are Muslim or Jewish or Christian, When we stand together, we're gay or straight, male or female. Yes, we can create a government that represents all of us and not just a handful of wealthy campaign contributors. Now, this campaign has won seven out of the last eight caucuses and primaries. With your help on Saturday, we're going to win here in Wyoming. And then we are headed to New York. And I know a little bit about New York because I spent the first 18 years of my life in Brooklyn, New York. No, please keep this a secret. Do not tell Secretary Clinton. She's getting a little nervous, and I don't want her to get more nervous. But I believe we've got an excellent chance to win New York and a lot of delegates in that state. We are going to head 
after some other states on the East Coast out to the West Coast. And we all have an excellent chance to win in Oregon and to win in California. And I think that a lot of these super delegates are going to be looking around them and that are going to be saying, which candidate has the momentum? Which candidate is bringing out huge numbers of people and creating huge <laughs> Which candidate can bring out large numbers of people? <laughs> See, I can't use the word huge anymore. It's out of my vocabulary. But we will win in November if there is a large voter turnout. That's what always happens. Democrats and progressives win <clears throat> when there is a large voter turnout. Republicans win when people are demoralized. This campaign is giving energy and enthusiasm to millions of Americans. people of this country are tired of establishment politics and establishment economics. I think the people of this country are ready for a political revolution. And if you ignore what you hear on corporate media, the facts are pretty clear. We have a path toward victory, a path toward the White House. And Wyoming can give us an enormous boost forward if we win here on Saturday. We often win, and almost always win, when the voter turnout is high we do poorly when the voter turnout is low. Let us see on Saturday a record-breaking turnout here in the Wyoming caucus. And let us have Wyoming Democrats making it clear that this great state is part of the political revolution. Thank you all very much. Thank you.